Good morning, afternoon, and evening, and welcome to Modeling in Vitro Permeability with Membrane Plus, presented by Kay Zito and Jim Mullen. To provide everyone an opportunity to continue to get logged in, I'll go over a couple of brief housekeeping notes. For optimal video and audio connection, we highly recommend you close out any additional web or streaming applications that may affect your internet bandwidth. We do take your privacy rights seriously at Simulations Plus, and by attending this call or participating in the Q&A session, you're allowing us to contact you for follow-up. Today's call is being recorded for future playback on our website and will be available on our YouTube channel for streaming. Today's webinar will have lecture and live demo followed by a Q&A session. For the Q&A session, you may ask questions via the questions panel on your control dashboard. Please submit your questions at any time during this presentation. We strive to have at least 10 minutes of Q&A, so don't be shy. Both Jim and Kay are awaiting your questions. We know there are lots of ways to spend your time today, and we appreciate you spending the next 60 minutes with us. Now, before we get started, we have a quick question. How familiar are you with Membrane Plus software? We'll give you a couple seconds to answer. Keep those responses coming in. And we're going to go ahead and close the poll now. It looks like we've got some very new people and beginners. So thank you for joining us again. You're in the absolute best place to learn about Membrane Plus software. Now it is my pleasure to introduce today's moderator, Ms. Cheryl Ann Ayagata, Inside Sales Rep for Simulations Plus. Cheryl Ann, take it away. Thank you, Arlene. Welcome to the Membrane Plus webinar. My name is Charlene Ayagata, and I'm pleased to have the opportunity to moderate this session. Thank you for taking this time out of your schedule to learn more about our software. When you reach out to Simulations Plus, I can help you with DDD Plus, Membrane Plus, PK Plus, Gastro Plus, and Admit Predictor. And while the majority of my time is focused on the academic space, if anyone on this webinar today has an interest in evaluating any of these products, please reach out to us. I'd be happy to set you up with an evaluation trial license. Um, Simulations Plus has four divisions globally. Our headquarters is located in Lancaster, California. Uh, we are the world leaders in PBPK modeling and software and consulting. Cognigen is located in Buffalo, New York. Their focus is PKPD modeling and consulting. Dilly Sim is located in North Carolina. Their focus is on quantitative systems toxicology. And our newest member of the organization is Lixoft, located in Paris, France, and known best for the Monolix suite. Altogether, we are 133 employees strong, of which 100 employees have advanced degrees. We achieved a recent milestone and have your support to thank for our consistent growth. Recently, we were named to the S&P Small Cap 600. Pausing once more to thank each of you. With every stage, we are best, excuse me, with a, we are best suited to assist with every stage in the drug development process, from discovery stage straight through to post-approval. Wherever you are in this process, we can help, including expert consulting and regulatory interaction. One last bit of information worthy of sharing for those in academia. We are happy to support your research efforts and have a generous discount program in place to do so. Having said that, please allow me to introduce today's presenters. Presenting today are Casey Toe and Jim Mullen. Casey Toe is a principal scientist and project manager of Membrane Plus. 
As such, she is responsible for developing and validating mechanistic mathematical models, computer programming, software testing, and assisting with licensing, installation, and training. training. Kay also plays a role in software testing and quality control for our Gastro Plus product. Kay has been at Simulations Plus for nine years and is a graduate of the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Jim Mullen is a senior principal scientist. He did his graduate work at Washington State University and holds a degree in chemical engineering. Jim has over 15 years of experience in computational modeling in the pharmaceutical industry, spending 10 years at Bend Research before joining Simulations Plus in 2014. On to you, Kay. Thank you, Charlene, and then thank you, Arlene. Um, it is my pleasure today um, to get uh, to present uh, to present a, a membrane plus software uh, partnered with my colleague um, Jim. Let me just show my slides first. So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Um, so today we're gonna discuss um, the membrane plus software. The first question you want to ask is that what is membrane plus? It is a software, uh, it is a model platform that allows you to simulate for your in vitro permeability cell-based assets. So on our model platforms, you can sim simulate sandwich culture hepatocytes. You can simulate the suspended hepatocytes or the permeability acids such as the PAMPA acids. KCO2 cell assets in the MDCK cells. For each of these model system, you can look in, into different endpoint outputs and utilize in our Gasho Plus software and then predict for the in vivo applications. For example, for the permeability based assets, you can look into the permeability, you can look in the parasolar permeability, lysosomal trapping. So you can define what is the fraction and bound in the enterocytes and utilize it in the in vivo applications. For the sandwich culture hepatocytes, you can look into the bioexcretion, you can look into the active updates from those kinetic experiments. You can quantify your Vmax and KM values and then allow you to do an IVIVE type application. For, some, uh, for the suspended hypothesis, again, you can look into the clearance and then eventually use them to connect with our Gesho Plus software. How this software will be able to help you? So first of all, it can unlock important information from your measured data. So if you have your kinetic data measured um, already, then you can fit the model using our Membrane Plus software and then find out what is the KM defined with your intracellular concentrations. And then you can figure out what's the fraction unbound in the, um, in the enterocytes through the lysosomal trapping. You can also uh, looking at the um, clearance from those hypothesites, hypothesite models. You can design better experiments to capture what you need before you even running the experiments. The PS, PSA module, the parameter sensitivity module, it's a powerful tool for you to probe into the experiment parameters to see how sensitivity, how sensitive your experiments um, to those um, uh, different uh, experimental settings. In that way, you can eliminate the waste before you're running the experiments. It can provide more accurate input in the Gesho Plus PBPK models. Um, just like we said, the uh, endpoints results from uh, membrane plus outputs, such as the fraction and bound in the enterocytes or the VMAS KM value that you fit it from the membrane plus can then be used in the Gesho Plus PBPK model to predict in vivo applications. 
and who should be using the software. If you are Gesho Plus users like myself and looking for the um, to define the inputs such as the lysosomal trapping content in the enterocytes, you want to um, find out what's the Vmax KM value for metabolisms or transported related mechanisms, then you should definitely consider using the Membrane Plus and then predict for those outputs. Then these outputs can be combined with the in vivo absorption PK predictions in the ACAT and PPPK model back in the Gesho Plus software. If you are a DMPK researcher that focuses on the in vitro transporter and uh, metabolism kinetic studies, you'll be able to use this software um, to calculate the Vmax and KM value from your kinetic studies and also predict the concentrations in the intracellular compartments. If you are a discovery scientist looking to categorize your compounds into the high and low permeability or different um, clearance classes, um, the building MM predictor module combined with Membrane Plus will give you a powerful tool just predict from structure to categorize these compounds. So this is today's outline. First of all, we're going to go through it. its interface, its user interface, and see how this is going to be set up for your, exp uh, for your simulations. Then we'll go into the model-specific details, looking at the mechanisms we included in Membrane Plus. And also, we'll take a peek at the new feature, one of the most important features in the upcoming version. Lastly, we'll do some case studies. I will be presenting some results from our previous model validations, while Jim will take over and give you an example um, discussing an IVIVE study by link between the Gesho Plus, by linking the uh, between the Gesho Plus and Membrane Plus um, application. Um, he will be doing a live demo there. The two major um, usage for Membrane Plus. The first one is on the data analysis. So if you have already run your experiments, you already have got the kinetic data from your experiments, you can first set up a Membrane Plus model by fitting your kinetic data. So then the model can give you instant permeability outputs. It can simulate it your, uh, or predict your intracellular concentrations in any of the subcellular compartments, such as in the membrane, uh, in the cytosol, in the lysosomes, for both the unbound and then um, cotal concentrations. Um, you can also uh, give the prediction of the, the KM and Vmax values for the enzyme and transporters. So usually if you want to have an accurate KM value, then it requires multiple uh, concentration levels um, to access this KM value. You can run the sensitivity analysis on any of the um, experimental parameters, um, such as the uh, shaking rate, pH, et cetera. You can also run it on the compound properties such as the log p-value to see how it's going to affect your um, simulated results. You can also use the sandwich culture or the suspended hypothesis model um, to study the, the, clear, the uh, bilateral clearance or hepatic clearance um, from these hepatic acids. And eventually, these can be used in the Gesho Plus models for the in vivo applications. The other usage of Membrane Plus is on the acid prediction. Just like what we had mentioned before, the building MM predictor module allows you to predict the compound properties from structure. So you will be able to get the predictions before you even running the, um, any experiments. The MM predictor can give you predictions besides the compound properties. It can also predict the KM Vmax value for five of the SIP enzymes from literature. So combining with the in silico predictions with or without some measurements of your compound properties, and then selected the um, 
after you selected the cell uh, platforms to run the simulations, you'll be able to get the predictions of the permeability. You can get the pr predictions for the intracellular concentrations in any of the cellular compartments. You'll be able to find out what's the fraction amount in enterocytes, what's the diffusional clearance. And then eventually all this information can be used in the IVA, IVE and then better integrated with Gastro Plus. Now in the, uh, in the next few slides, I'm gonna go through the Membrane Plus user interface and guide you through how to set up the simulations. So if you already a, a Gastro Plus user, you will notice at the first glance, this interface is very similar to Gastro Plus. The first tab is the compound tab, which contains all the compound related information, um, such as the uh, lot P, uh, diffusivity, et cetera. So these compound properties, the physical chemical properties can be predicted by either the building MN predictor module or can be entered directly from your experiments. The second part is the initial uh, concentrations. So if you have a trans well system, you can set up the donor and receiver side concentrations. If you have a hypothesized system, then only the donor side concentration is relevant. On this portion is the passive transport membrane model. Uh, since we have a slide uh, talking about this model, I'm not going to go into details here, but this is our default model. It's building on the molecular descriptors listed as here. The next slide, uh, the next tab is the experimental setup. We do have some building membrane type for PEMPA acids, KCO2 acids, MDCK, um, um, suspended hypothesis, and sandwich culture hypothesis. This information uh, uh, captured from the product catalogs and enter in the sections called the experimental setup. So when a certain type of membrane is selected, the experimental setup will only show the parameters that related to that kind of model system. although the shaking rates need to be set um, according to your experimental conditions. For the uh, bottom part of this tab, you can see that we have sampling setup, the protein binding setup, and then compound loss setup. The uh, sampling setup will allow you to set up if you want to replace or not replace um, the samples um, when you sample from either the apical or basal lateral compartments. For the protein binding setup, this is usually when you want to create a sync condition on the receiver side. So the receiver side can be on the apical side or basal lateral side for a trans well system. Um, you can set up, um, there are two models here uh, we provide and we will be looking into those models uh, in, in the next few slides. If your recovery, if the total recovery rate is less than 100%, you might want to consider set up the compound loss. Um, so the loss can due to the binding to the plastic or evaporation to the air or non-specific um, non binding, any kinds of non-specific uh, non binding. This can all be set up in the compound loss. The next tab is the simulation tab. So uh, again, here we're providing three different modes for the simulation. You can run the single simulation uh, for the current compound, or you can run a parameter sensitivity analysis, just like uh, what we mentioned before. And um, if you just want to scream your um, all the compounds in this database, um, Simultaneously, you can run the batch simulation. So the program will run one by one uh, according to each of the records in this database and then generate the output file. And you can then use the output file to compare side by side all these compounds um, at the same time. 
for the single simulation output window, these, so, these are the so-called endpoint values. So at the end of the simulation, you'll be able to uh, get the information of the receiver site concentration, membrane concentration, the donor site concentration, and the percent recovered. So if any of the last model has been set up here, your total um, percent recovered will be less than 100%. Um, you can also get the value of the fraction unbound in the cell. Also, you will get uh, um, endpoint um, permeability values. So you can get the total permeability and also uh, the parasolar and transolar permeabilities. Finally, you can also get uh, um, the drug being transported and then the drug being metabolized if the transporter and, and um, enzymes are being set up with your current compound. For the observed values, so um, there are two purposes of this window. You can set up the value here to compare with the outputs from your simulation, or these values can be used together with your kinetic data for the fitting. So if you select this endpoint data for the, um, for the fitting, then you can specify the weight you want to, uh, you want to use in the optimization module. Next is the graphing tab. Um, we do have two modes. The first one is the concentration time profile. The default profile only show you the apical or basal lateral side of the concentration. But if you click on the new plot, then you will be accessing um, all the concentrations in the subcellular compartments, bind or unbind, and also the amount being transported or the amount being metabolized. So they're um, allowed to explore it in the new plot window. The other mode is showing into the end amounts. So this will be showing you the accumulated amount in each of these cell, uh, subcellular compartments or in the donor and receiver side. For all these simulation mode, single, batch and PSA, you can save the results in the Excel file and then use the Excel file later on your own to generate reports or generate more graph. Now I'm going to go into the model details to see what kind of mechanisms were included in the Membrane Plus. So this is the overview of the transfer system. Um, in the transfer system, the cells are sitting on top of the filter support. You will have the apical side and then basal lateral side of the solution. So the diffusion can be occurring um, on the apical side. The unstirred water layer is related to the shaking rate. We do have a clinical equation to calculate the unstirred water layer. And I also have a slide in the later part of my presentation. Um, the next is the um, partitioning into the cells. So um, you can either using the, uh, it, it, it's either the uh, passive partitioning into the cells or it can be a transport mediated mechanism. So both are considered um, in our model. You can also have the lysosomal trapping. Um, the, here the assumption we are making is the lysosomal membrane is similar to the cellular membrane. So the uh, membrane transit, the, uh, the membrane entry and the exit rates will be the same as um, you have on the cellular membrane. And then inside the cells, there could be metabolism going on. And then um, on the basal lateral side, uh, the compound will be aciding or uh, coming into the, in the cells through the passive or active mechanisms. So the tight junction can be formed in between two cells, and then this allows the paracellular diffusion. And then the filter support is going to um, hinder the, the diffusion on the basal lateral side. Usually, um, this is not going to affect um, the permeability uh, very much unless you have a very low permeability compound. Again, the diffusion can be happening from the basal lateral solutions. 
You can also set up their protein binding, just like I said, in the either the uh, apical side or basal lateral side or both. We can also set up the protein binding in this cytosol. And then any lost um, to the either plastic binding, not specific lost, or to the evaporation. This all can be set up um, in the current Membrane Plus platform. For the sandwich culture hypothesis, most of the mechanisms stays the same, but you don't have the apical side of solution. You, um, um, the cells are sitting on the plate bottom and you only have better, better let, basal lateral side of the solution. So most of um, the mechanisms still stays the same, but here the bio pockets can be formed. Um, they're connecting, um, can be formed uh, um, to the adjacent cells. So these, these bio pockets are connected um, at the uh, apical uh, membranes between those two cells. And again, you will have some uh, passive mechanism or um, active uh, transporters to govern the drug transport uh, between the intracellular space and these bio pockets. This model is also applicable for the plated hypothesis, which don't have these uh, bio pockets, what you need to do there is just setting up the contact area, um, this apical contact area, and then the bio pocket volume to be zero. For the suspended hypothesis, um, the, the cells are floating in the solution. Um, that's why we don't have the membrane uh, differentiation. It, it can tell which side is the apical side and which side is the basal lateral side. So here we are applying a spherical system um, to the cells. So any transporter you set up here, we'll call it uh, basal lateral transporters. Um, but then we don't differentiate between the apical and basal lateral side. The other changing here is the, the diffusion layer. So we don't, uh, just like the, um, unlike the other models, we don't relate it to the shaking rates. Instead, we assume that the diffusion layer, this boundary layer, is the same size of the, the, um, the hypothesis. To be able to model the drug trans transfer uh, between the bio pockets and the intracellular space, there are certain parameters uh, we need to set up. So in this 2014 paper, um, the authors measured the hypothesized bio contact area and also the bio canalicular volume in the percentage of the tissue volume. In this earlier paper published in the 70s, the authors have measured uh, um, the volume uh, composition of the different cell types. So the lysosomal volume in the hypothesis is measured to be about 0.82% uh, um, here. So all these values are taken into our hypothesis models, just um, as I show you here. So this 3.4, 9.9, and then um, the 0 0.2, 0 0.82 are taken from those publications. For the plated hypothesis, then um, again, you can uh, model by setting up these two values to be zero. You have the zero um, biocanonicular volume and then also the contact area to be zero to be able to, to uh, model the plated hypothesis. For the uh, biocontraction efflux, we do provide a, um, a first order model here. So you can enter the um, bio efflux rate um, if you wish to model that mechanism here. You can also set up the fraction amount in the cytosols. Um, now I'm going to go into each of the mechanisms. So first one is the diffusion. Um, in this Nelson paper published in 2004, um, he studied all the models published previously. Um, so they all taking the same forms. 
um, but have a little different uh, fitting parameters. So he combined all the data and figure out, so like an average fit um, to all those observed data. This is also the model we used in the uh, membrane plus software. So you can relate it, the um, diffusion layer thickness to your shaking rate. Again, this doesn't apply to the suspended hypothesis. For the membrane entry and assay rates, as we mentioned before, we currently have three models for it. The default model is a structure-based model trained on the 44 KCO2 data sets the data uh, provided by the absorption system. So you can see that we related to the membrane assay and uh, entry rates to the drop log P uh, value, the presence of the non-benzene rings structures, and then the hydrogen binding features. So when you have an MM predictor module, these molecular descriptors are gonna be automatic calculated and using the model prediction. The second one is a LAPI dependent model. So this is a modified Kubini uh, equation from the literature. The model was developed for the cogeneration series of compounds. So if you have the same type of compounds, you can um, try this option. There are a little bit of fitting um, that's required. It's gamma, delta, C and M are the fitting parameters that are needed for this model. Or you can enter this membrane um, entry and assay rates directly. Next is the parasolar diffusion. We currently provided the same model as we do uh, for Gesho Plus, the axon model and the Jimmy model. So the molecular radius will be calculated again by the MF predictor. Um, the only difference is that the Physi physiological parameters um, are different than the, in the in vivo setting as we, we have in the Gesho Plus. So this set of parameters are through the fitting to the literature data on mannitol and, and, and atenidol. If you have some mechanisms that will modify the opening of the tight junctions, you might want to consider changing these default parameters such as the um, added calcium. So it will modify the opening of these tight junctions. The future support, um, normally, again, this is not gonna affect uh, very much um, to your permeability, but if you have extremely low permeability compounds, that might have certain effects. Next is the metabolisome and transporter. Now we're using the Michaelis Metan kinetics to model the metabolism and transporters. You can see that um, for the um, different type of transporters, um, you'll be either facing the uh, intracellular concentration or the buffer uh, concentration. This is very important um, for us to, fit, uh, to get the uh, accurate KM. If you just measure the buffer concentrations, um, the KM you'll be fitting, that um, it, um, will be defined by your buffer concentration. But the, um, the, for this efflux transporter, it's actually facing the intracellular concentration. So it is very important for the software to be able to predict the intracellular concentration and uh, event eventually find out what is this KM value um, according to this intracellular concentration. Eventually, this information can be utilized to form an IV, IVE type of study um, in Gesho Plus. And Jim will take you um, to do an example for that. Next, it's lysosomal trapping. Um, so lysosome is a cellular compartment that has a lower pH than the cytosols. The pH in the cytosols is about 7.2, while in the lysosomes is about 4 to 5. So if you have a lipophilic compound that has um, um, pKa is greater than 6.5, when the compound enters in the lysosomes, the balance is going to be broken. And so it's going to push towards to more ionized species in the lysosomes 
when the compound is more ionized here, it makes it harder to get out from the lysosomal membrane. So uh, the lysosomes are serve as a reservoir for the compounds. Uh, when the drugs are clean out from the, um, the system, then this balance is going to be broken again, so the compound can be transferred out from the lysosomal membrane to the, to the lysosomes and then out of the cells. So the, if, you look, if you look at the in vivo PK data, a uh, main uh, characteristic of this lysosomal uh, compound is that they will have elongated Tmax. You have a very long Tmax value. For the six compounds listed in this paper published in 2013, you can see that the longest Tmax is 27 hours. So the other mechanism um, is protein binding. We can, um, there are two models we're providing a membrane plot to set up the protein binding. Uh, you can specify the fraction and bound or uh, use the Hue equation um, to have a saturated binding. You can also set the diffraction and bound in the cytosols. In the next version, this is uh, one of the long requested feature, the in vitro TCAP model. So um, in the next version, you'll be able to simulate the skin samples um, in either the static diffusion cell or the flow through diffusion cells. When one of these models is selected, then you will have the dermal uh, diffusion set of parameters related to the experiments. We do uh, include the reservoir um, to simulate the in vivo, in vitro case in Gesho Plus, but compared with the models we included in Gesho Plus, you definitely have more experimental control here. And also we have uh, more um, thermal sample type for you to select. And you can have a domotome skin, you can have a heat separated epidermis or using the full skin or stratum conium. So there are definitely more choices to select here while the um, demo formulation remains the same as Gesho Plus. It's definitely a very exciting feature to look forward to. Now I'm gonna go into the validation example. So our first example is a lysosomal trapping example on uh, propranolol. So uh, looking at the compound properties, it has a, a basic pKa 9.48 uh, and then uh, log p-value 2.98. So looking at these values, this is probably a candidate for the lysosomal trapping. Um, the experimental setup, we do have the drug dose from the apical side or basal lateral side with or without the bifluomycin, which is a lysosomal pH modi uh, modifier with the bifluomycin, the uh, uh, lysosomal pH is going to be elevated. The membrane uh, info and the experimental setup are listed here. So these are taken exactly as out in our simulations. For dosing the um, propranolol alone, then you will see that based on our default lysosomal pH, we are, we are able to match the um, observed data and simulation uh, results pretty well from the A to B and then B to A direction. The uh, red line is the concentration in the apical compartment. The open squares are the observed data where the, um, the line is our simulated results. The blue line is the basal lateral concentrations and the CN is the cytosol concentration, the orange is the lysosomal concentration. You can see that the lysosomal concentration is much higher than the cytosol concentration from the prediction. When we dose the uh, propanolol with the bifomycin, um, we fitted the lysosomal pH to be 5.5 uh, because we, we know that bifomycin have this effect on the lysosomes. Um, so by fitting only one parameter, we're able to um, simulate the results. We're 
able to match the um, concentration profiles really well from the A to B and B to A directions. For the comparison, um, there's a, 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 a different category of compounds. Propanolol is a basic compound, um, so you will see that the lysosomal concentration is much higher than the cytosol uh, concentration. For a neutral compound, testosterone, and you will see that these two concentrations overlay on top of each other. For the acidic case, ibuprofen, um, inside, the side, uh, inside the lysosomes, the, uh, it's gonna driven um, to the other direction. It's gonna, um, it's harder for the drug to uh, ionize. So you will be seeing a much lower concentration in the lysosome compartment than in the cytosol compartment. So all these data are provided in the same paper um, as we mentioned before. And you can see the, the effect of our lysosomal trapping model on different classes of compounds. The second example is the uh, drug uptake to the bio. So um, this is the sodium uh, sodium torocolate compound. Um, it has a low permeability, so it makes it harder to enter the um, cell membrane. The uh, clearance mechanism is mainly by the hepatic uptake and efflux. So it makes a perfect co compound to study the um, bilateral clearance. In this school um, um, poster presented in the ISSX meeting 2014, they are uh, providing the measurements from the cell lysosomes and also from the buffers. So there are two phases, the cell uptake phase, um, where you have you give the, um, the donor um, compartments and also the efflux phase where you remove the donor uh, compartment and then put the cells into the buffer. Um, so you can see that they, me they measure um, these cellular concentrations, um, which are given by the open circles here, and also the combined concentrations from the cells and the bile together, which are given by the closed circles here. For the buffer uh, concentration, they also provided the measurements with the uh, uh, calcium and without the calcium. The calcium will modify the opening of this, um, the tight junctions. That's why the um, observation data are a little bit different here. So the, all these informations are provided um, in this poster. These are the mechanisms for the sodium toracolate um, to be cleared. So um, the uh, drug will be taken into the cells by the MTCP influx transporters, and when they reach the cytosols, it's going to be pumped into the bile by the BSEP transporters and also pump it back to the uh, medium by the M MRP4 um, efflux transporter. Although in a later paper, um, this mechanism uh, might be actually uh, related to the OST alpha beta efflux transporter, and that's what we've been used. That's what we use in this model as well. So all these three transporters have been set up to study the, the current compound. There are uh, some assumptions that we are given to, um, to this validation example, no protein binding, no stirring, and we assume that complete monolayer of cells. Um, we use all the M predictor values except for the KM values. For the KM values, we are able to find some literature results on them. Uh, because we don't have the whole onset of different uh, concentrations, uh, so we don't have enough data to fit the KM value, but we do find the literature um, KM values from either the human and rat study. And you can see from these values, they are pretty consistent from either from the rat measurements or the human measurements. So we combine this information and put into our final model. In here, we fitted the kinetic data, we fitted the VMAX according to the kinetic data. You can see that our models predicts um, the drug uptake phase and also the efflux phase, efflux phase pretty well. The CN line is the combination of the cellular concentration and bio concentration. Um, the purple line is the cellular concentration, while the um, red line 
is the buffer and donor and the buffer phase um, in the media. So here, um, we, I only presented two of the validation examples here, but there are definitely more examples in our um, user menu. So if you're interested to see more um, validation examples, please refer to the user menu. Thank you, Kay, for the presentation. Today, I will be going through an example of IV IVE with suspended hepatocytes. So the goal here is to build a model in Membrane Plus to calculate the nonlinear metabolism for propafenone, the KM and Vmax value for CYP2D6. Then use that KM and Vmax in Gastro Plus to perform an IVIVE prediction of the IV clearance in human subjects. So the first step involved is to build our Membrane Plus model. Now for time constraints, I've already built the model. Um, and so we have a database set up already with the ADMET predictor imported structure record, which is the first record in this database called propafenone. Uh, propafenone is a lipophilic class two molecule and it's metabolized by CYP2D6. If I click the record selector, you can see I built four formulations for different dose concentrations from 0.05 micromolar all the way to 5 micromolar. These records will be the basis of optimizing KM and Vmax for the CYP2D6 metabolism. So let me click one of these records, the 0.05 micromolar record. Here you can see we've set the donor concentration to the proper uh, initial concentration. We've set up our suspended hepatocyte with the correct information to match the study as was reported, um, where they used a shaking rate of 100 RPM, a media volume of two mils, and a cell density of 1 million cells per mil. If we look at our spreadsheet, we have the hepatocyte data here. So this is what the raw data that we're going to be optimizing against looks like. It's from the Kimura paper in 2005. And here's all five doses where we have percent remaining of the propafenone versus time. So you can see the curve here is 0.05 micromolar and then all the way up the, the slower percent, uh, slower uh, metabolism is for the higher dose. Obviously it takes longer for it to metabolize the five micromolar propafenone. So all this data has been in, input into our membrane plus model and all the concentration time profiles imported such that we can perform an optimization to get a good fit to all the data and calculate the KM and Vmax value. So, if we go back to Membrane Plus, you can see that um, we have all the records set up. We're going to select just the four records that have um, dosing information. And to do that, we'll use our record filter in, in Membrane Plus. So we'll go to database, select subset by any part of drug name or ID. And if we say to be selected micromolar, that will filter out just the four records that have doses um, in micromolar. So if we click OK, you'll now see that we have four records. And if we run a simulation on the first record here, just a single simulation, you can see that it will calculate um, some uh, intermittent values while it's running the simulation. And then once it's done, it'll plot the data on the graph tab. And if I click new plot, I'm just going to, um, the blue curve is the total cell concentration. I'm going to uncheck that quickly here. And you can see that we don't have a currently a very good fit. Um, right now, what we're using is the um, in silico predictions for metabolism from ADMET predictor. And so they weren't quite um, right or, or weren't quite perfect in predicting the, um, uh, uh, the, the metabolism rate. So we need to optimize those values and then we'll get a closer prediction. Uh, to do that, we need to use the optimization module in Membrane Plus. So to get to the optimization module, you will click under File, uh, the File menu up here, Modules, Optimization, Select Parameters from List. 
Um, so we want to use all records to do the optimization so that it fits all the data sets as best possible. So we'll select use all records in the database. And then we also want to set them um, or select the metabolic parameters. So click the uh, met metabolism and transporters tab and then select uh, SIP2D6, KM and VMAX. Once that's done, you can click next. Um, and then you can set the objective function weights, uh, which uh, basically tells the software how much you want to weight the different points. And in this case, we want to sort of weight all the points equally. So we'll click one over y hat squared. Um, and we also want to use the concentration of obje uh, time objective function weight. So uh, we'll be setting that to one. These are the default values, so we don't need to change anything. Just click next. The baseline values again came from AdMet Predictor. You could set the lower and upper bound here, but we don't really um, need to, to do that in this case. The optimizer will find a, a solution. And so we'll click finished. Once that's been done, we can go to the simulation tab and now the simulation start button will change into an optimize button and it'll allow you to run the multi uh, record optimization. So if I click optimize, I'm going to use this, the default optimization output file name, click save, and the file exists, so I will overwrite it. And, and then it's just going to ask me if it's okay to break in the optimization, and we'll click okay. So what it's doing now is running through all four of those records, running a base simulation with our initial starting guess parameters, and then the optimization routine is going to um, basically try new values for both VMAX and KM until uh, it finds a better um, combination uh, for the solution. And it uses a specific pattern search algorithm, and that's a little bit, uh, you know, I guess too technical to get into on this short presentation, but uh, behind the scenes, it's, do it, it's using an algorithm to find the optimal um, values. So I know that this, uh, this optimization takes about 180 um, iterations and we're on nine right now, so we don't have time to wait for all of that. So at this point, I'm going to click stop and then what we'll do. Is wait until that finishes and I'm going to say no, we do not want to save the changes. Um, what I'm going to do is open up the uh, database that we've already done. So this is like a cooking show where we've already baked the goodies and we have them all uh, cooked for us. So we go to propofenone opt, which is the optimized version, which uh, I basically started from that same starting point and let the optimization run about 880 iterations. Um, so if we open that and then go to our 0.05 micro micromolar record um, and click the enzyme table, you can see that we have different VMAX and KM parameters in the table. These are the optimized values that, that our optimization routine found um, for, this set, for these data sets. Um, so this is what we're going to use to do the IVIVE prediction. Um, but first, we have to convert this VMAX value in micromoles per second per liter of cytosol to a value that GastroPlus can use, which in this case will be nanomoles per minute per uh, 10 to the 6th. Um, uh, cells. Um, so let's copy this value. I'm just going to hit Control C, click Cancel, and then go to the Tools Conversion Tool in Membrane Plus. And we can, under the Metabolism and Transporter Converter, there's a VMAX converter. So we can uh, paste our value in there of 8.59 uh, e to the minus 2, and that will be converted to nanomoles per minute per 10 to the six cells. So this is the value that we're going to use in GastroPlus to um, set our metabolism for our IVIVE. So at this point, I think we're pretty much done with Membrane Plus. We've done the optimization. We've converted our in vitro VMAX into something that GastroPlus can utilize. And so now we can go to GastroPlus and build a model for propofenone and then uh, simulate the IV bolus administration at 70 MIGs uh, using uh, this in vitro CAM and VMAX parameter. So the first step I'm going to do here is create a new drug database for propofenone. So I'm going to go to File, New Drug Database, and GastroPlus. 
I'm going to go to the propofenone folder that I've set up and we'll just call this uh, database propofenone um, demo and we'll overwrite the old um, database that we have. Yes, we'll override it. So we've created a new database. Uh, we have a placeholder record called new drug, which is just all the default parameters in Gastro Plus. Um, but what we want to do is create uh, a record with all the same uh, physical chemical properties as what we used over here in the Membrane Plus simulation. The easiest way to do that is to import in the structure for propofenone. So if we go to File, uh, Import, Import Structure, we'll find that we have, um, we'll have to navigate to our Gastro Plus folder and our propofenone folder, and we have a .mol file that I've kind of pulled from ChemSpider. Um, of course, you can create these from your drawing program, the structured drawing program um, of your choosing. Um, I'm going to click OK. So it's going to read that .mol file, and now we're going to import in all the physicochemical properties for propofenone and a default formulation setting and default pharmacokinetics and physiology. Um, we already know that the compound is metabolized by CYP2D6, but, you know, just in case, um, I am going to import it in and see if we predict the correct metabolism using our ADMET predictor um, classification uh, routines to, to determine what is the likely route of metabolism. So I'm going to um, uncheck clearance to none and select VMAX and KM. And I'm going to use predicted 3A4, HLM, and all others, RCIP, which uses our HLM model um, for 3A4, and then the other uh, enzymes that will use the recombinant CYP data. Um, we could also um, set up our physiology at this point. Um, that would be fairly straightforward to do. If I go back to our spread, uh, spreadsheet and look at the human IV tab, it has the IV data from the Holman publication um, for propofenone after IV injection. And then it also has the subject statistics. So in this case, um, it's a body weight, mean body weight of 74 kilograms, and then an uh, average age of 33 and a half. So we'll assume 34 years old and 74 kilograms body weight. So we can do that here in the pharmacokinetics and physiology import structure property settings. So I'm going to go to, to the PK model, drop down, and select create new PBPK. Now this window will is the paraphysiology window, and, and from this window you can set up any physiology you want. Um, so we're looking at human species here, but you could also set up a rat, dog, mouse, monkey, rabbit, mini pig. Um, we're looking at an American population, but you could select Japanese, Chinese, you could select male, female, or a cirrhosis subject, renal impairment subject, or a healthy subject, and then the age and weight. Um, so I'm going to select uh, 34 years old and 74 kilograms, and just click OK, and that will build my subject. Behind the scenes, it's going to use the Lukachova method for the KP estimation. That'll calculate the tissue partition coefficients for all the tissues in the PBPK subject. And uh, we'll use the um, FUP times GFR to, to determine the renal clearance. And uh, I think we're set up to go. We can just click up OK at this point. And it should import in our record. So we see it's Im imported in our record for propofenone. We can get rid of the placeholder record new drug. We no longer need this record anymore. It's, it was just a placeholder to begin with. We don't need it, so let's get rid of it. Um, so to do that, we go to database, delete current record, delete all records with this name, yes. And now you'll see we just have our propofenone uh, drug record. Of course, we need to set up the correct dosage form. So uh, let's select on the dosage form drop down IV bolus. And the correct dose here is 70 MIGs. Um, I'm going to go to database and save drug record to save those changes. Um, let's verify that our physiology has been set up correctly. So you can see that our 
um, PBPK physiology has been set up uh, from our structure import. And um, so just to make sure I don't really change anything else, I'm going to create a new uh, compound uh, record uh, for this uh, IV bolus administration. So I'm going to go to database coffee drug record and I'm going to say uh, IV bolus 70 mig. So that way we'll have um, a separate record for the IV bolus. And um, from here we can enter in our uh, enzyme information. So if we click enzyme table, you can see that uh, ADMET predictor predicted that CYP2D6 was the major route of metabolism here. And that was what was reported in the paper. And so that um, checks out. Uh, so ADMET predictor did predict the correct route of metabolism. Um, of course, it didn't predict exactly the right uh, metabolic rate. So we can use the experimental data in Membrane Plus and our fit of KM and VMAX to inform our PBPK modeling. Um, uh, so that that's uh, what we're going to do now. Uh, the easiest way to do that would be to click the unit converter here. And then we can enter in our information for our uh, 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 in vitro experiment. So the VMAX value is 0 0.01 262 nanomoles per minute per 10 to the six cells. So let's uh, make sure it uh, has been set up correctly here. So we have 0.01262 nanomoles per minute per 10 to the six cells. We also want to make sure that the assay type has been selected as hepatocytes. We want to make sure that the in vitro fraction unbound is selected to be um, unbound. We don't want to use the Austin or Halifax method in this case to um, calculate an FU because uh, Membrane Plus does a mechanistic calculation and accounts for all that and is looking simply at the unbound intracellular KM. So, so we would want to select in vitro uh, value as unbound. Um, we want to show advanced options. In this case, we used a hepatic concentration of 1 million cells per mil um, from our in vitro assay. And uh, the expression levels for CYP2D6 are built into the software, and our liver weight comes from our PBPK subject, so that's set up correctly. So um, from, from here, we can click uh, transfer 2D6 KM and VMAX to the enzyme table, and that will um, uh, send these values that were converted um, from the in vitro data to our enzyme table for our in vivo prediction. So let's click that. So you'll see CAM and VMAX values have been exported to the table. That means that these in vitro values for, from Membrane Plus, remember 0.012626. And if we look at the KM value, 7.78e uh, e to the minus 3 have been entered and converted into an in vivo VMAX. And now that's been put in the enzyme table. So we have the correct values that reflect the in vitro experiment in Membrane Plus. We can save that. And now all we have to do is run a simulation. But first, before we do that, we want some data to compare it to, right? Um, so if we go back to our spreadsheet, you can see that we had in vivo data for the human subjects. We've digitized that, and we have the time concentration data in column uh, A7 through uh, C48 in this case. We can copy that, right-click, copy. And then we can import that into our Gastro Plus record. So um, to import in and compare against experimental data in Gastro Plus, uh, you'll accomplish this through the support files menu, which are, is found in the file load and then the IPD in this case, since we're using an in, in uh, IV dosage form here. So if you're using an oral dosage form, you'd use an OPD file. But in this case, since we're using IV, we would select uh, item number five here, which is the uh, tissue plasma concentration data for an IV dosage form. So we'd paste in the data, and we always want to check our units. Uh, so you see it's time and hours versus microgram per mil. However, our study was in nanograms per mil. So we want to go to units, tissue plasma data, IV dosage form, and then select nanograms per mil versus hours. We also want to put the dose in the comments field and the body weight. That's always usually a 
good thing to do if you want to do any to do any compartmental modeling using PK plus later. That's a that's something you want to do. OK, so I clicked redraw and now you can see the concentration time profile. It does seem to match what we have here, you know, in the image, so we're looking good. OK. So I'm going to save this by going to file, save as, and then um, I'm going to click save. Alrighty, so that's good. And then uh, we'll click OK. So now all we have to do is run a simulation and we should be able to then, um, uh, you know, view the results and it should uh, look look good if we did everything correctly. So go into the simulation tab, click start to run a simulation. You can see now that we have an AUC of about 1200 for uh, 1200 nanograms per hour per or nanogram hours per mil and about a thousand for the observed data. And if we click on the graph tab, and I think it looks a little bit better on a semi log plot, you can see that this is the prediction just strictly from the in vitro uh, metabolism data. So um, not such a bad prediction um, from, you know, just predicting everything from structure and then modifying the metabolism with the in vitro measured value. So this is what I wanted to go over um, for you today, the link between the Membrane Plus software um, using the suspended hepatocyte model to extract metabolic parameters uh, for your for your drug, and then using that information in Gastro Plus to make an IV, 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 IVIVE prediction. So it's been uh, uh, it's been uh, my pleasure to talk to you. If you have any additional questions on this, um, you know, I'll check out our um, LinkedIn uh, profile and. Uh, I'll uh, see you down the road. Thank you.